This conference will now be recorded. So, you've spent time learning Dynamics 365 and entering data into the system. But how can you retrieve that data to create views and reports for yourself or other users? In this video, we will cover Advanced Finds, a powerful query tool that allows you to filter for the list of records you want to see in Dynamics 365 and create views to easily find these lists in the future. You can also use Advanced Finds to prepare data for export to Office Excel, where you can analyze, summarize, or aggregate data, or create pivot tables to view your data from different perspectives. Let's hop into Dynamics 365 and review the steps for creating advanced finds. Okay, now that we're in Dynamics 365, you'll notice that we started from a list of active accounts. To access the advanced find functionality, I'm going to click on the filter icon in the top blue ribbon of Dynamics 365. When I click this icon, an advanced find window will be opened. You'll notice right now that our look for is set to account. This is always going to be the entity that you're searching for. And we're going to start from the saved view of active accounts. In the look for, we've selected the record type of account. If you started from within a list of records, like we did, the look for will auto populate with the entity you're on. I recommend starting from within a view so you have less filters to add. As you can see here, there are already filters added, so you don't have to take the time to filter out the inactive records by adding a status filter. We already have status equals active, which saved us a few clicks. In order to add additional filters, you'll want to click up here where it says details. This now gives you the option to remove this filter if we needed to, or add a new filter. In this situation, we're going to add a new filter. So currently, if we were to view results, we would see all of the active accounts that are listed in Dynamics 365. However, we want to narrow that list down. For the purpose of this example, let's say that we want to narrow this list to include only accounts in a specific city. So if I view results, you'll see that we've started with 107 accounts. Let's pretend that we need to view our accounts that are in the Addle only. You'll click back over into the Advanced Find tab, and you're going to click Select to define your search criteria further. When you click select, you'll be presented with a list of fields. In this case, we want to choose our address one city field. We're going to leave our operator at equals, and this is part of the expression that defines how a specified attribute should be compared with a value. Should it equal the value? Should it just contain the value, um, should it be blank entirely? So if we chose does not contain data, it would show us accounts that are active where there is no city specified. And there's a lot of different options here for you to explore, as you can see. For this example, we're gonna go with address one city equals, and then we're just going to enter Seattle. So now we have two filters. And they, these two filters are going to narrow our list down from 107 accounts to a smaller list that just contains accounts where the status is set to active and the address one city is set to Seattle. Next, we can specify the columns we want to include in the search results. So to do that, we would click on edit columns. This window is going to allow us to edit the columns for the saved view. These columns represent the data that will be displayed in the view once we view our search results. So right off the bat, we know we want to see the name of the account. 
and potentially the contact information, the main phone number. But the address one city field is no longer necessary in our list of columns because we already know that all of these accounts are going to live in Seattle. For the purpose of just displaying that this advanced find did return the appropriate data, I'm going to leave this field. Um, but in general, this would be a column you could remove if you needed more columns to be added so that this isn't taking up space unnecessarily. I'll leave it and you'll notice when we view our results that city is gonna say Seattle for all of these accounts. We're gonna leave primary contact and the email address of the primary contact. But let's go ahead and add one additional column. To do so, you'll click on add column. And then once you're here, you'll notice that we have the record type set to account. We also could pull in different associated records. But for the purpose of this view, we're only gonna pull in the account record. And then we can choose from any of the fields listed on the account record to also display in our search results. For this example, I'm going to bring in the owner field. This will show me on each account who the owner is. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And then if I scroll over, you'll see that now we have our owner field added as a column so that when we view our list of results, we can see the owner. I'm also going to remove a field just to explain how that is done. If we click on the main phone column, you'll notice it is highlighted in green. This means that this is the selected column. To adjust the column, I could use my arrows to move it to the left or to the right. Additionally, I can remove this column. Do I really want to remove this column? Yes, so I'll click OK. And now that column is no longer in my view. Now let's say that we know that the city may be um, a longer city. Maybe it has um, a lot of different letters and we need it to be a longer column, closer to the width of the account name. To adjust the properties of this column, you can select it and then click Change Properties. Here, you can select the width for this column and it's done by pixels. We only need a little bit more space, so I'm gonna choose 125 pixels and click OK. You'll notice it is slightly larger now and we could change it again if we needed to and sometimes this is done simply through trial and error. Now that we've expanded our city column, the last thing we may want to do is configure sorting. I'm gonna click on this and this is going to ask me how I want to sort my search results. I think for the purpose of this um, training, I think the account name is great, but then I'm gonna go ahead and also sort it by owner. So it's gonna show me account name for all of the specific user in order, then it'll go to the next user, show me all their accounts and so on. So you don't have to have two sorting options. You could just leave it at only account name. But just for the purpose of this example, to show you guys how it's done, we'll go ahead and select account name and then owner. I'm gonna click OK here and then OK here. We already have our filters. So the last step is to view the results. To do so, I'm gonna go ahead and click results, the red exclamation point. Here, you'll see that all of these accounts are in Seattle, as they should be. We narrowed our list down from 107 records to 22, because we only filtered for active accounts where the city is set to Seattle. If I click back on Advanced Find, we're back to our search results where we can um, add more filters, edit columns if we needed to, and so on. Lastly, I'd like to show you how to save this view. So you'll notice that the save button is grayed out. That's because you can't overwrite a system view. And we started from within a system view, active accounts. Instead of saving this view, what we can do is click save as, and we can name this active accounts in Seattle and save it. So now, 
You have your system views, and then you have one view that you've created under my views called Active Accounts in Seattle. Now, let's say that we wanted to filter for Active Accounts in Seattle where the primary contact email address is blank. You want to see if any of your Seattle accounts um, need to be updated and need that email address to be populated. So when we click on the select option to add an additional filter, you'll notice we have this bold header for fields. Under fields, we have all of these field names that are found on the account record. Then you get down here to the related set of fields um, or entities, I should say. So these are all related entities, so entities that are related to accounts. Let's look for primary contact. If I select primary contact, now I have a list of fields and these fields are going to be fields found on the contact record and specifically the primary contact for each of the accounts returned in our search. I'm going to scroll down here and select my email field. And instead of equals, I'm going to change this operator to does not contain data. This view will now show me any of my active accounts where the address one city is Seattle and the primary contact email address is blank. So when I view my results here, you'll notice that of the 22 we had earlier, 15 of those accounts have primary contacts where the email address is blank. So this might be a list that you want to work through and reach out to those primary contacts via phone to see if you can grab their email address and then enter that data into CRM so that you have that in case you ever need to send them an email in the future. So let's go back to our advanced fund. Now you'll notice that you do have a save button because this is a personal view. But keep in mind, if you save this, you're going to overwrite it. So you would change the criteria just a little bit. So instead of saving it, you might wanna do a save as, or you could edit properties. This would allow you to change the name. So maybe we would change it to active accounts in Seattle where the primary contact has no email address and save it. So that gives you a very clear picture of what that view would be. Next, let's click on saved views here and talk about how we could share this view out. So you'll notice that anything listed under saved views are views that we've created and saved. So I've only created one view and it is listed here. When I select this view, not click on it, but select it, I have a few buttons up here that give me a few options. If I select it and click assign, this is going to assign this view away from me. So I would no longer have access to this view because it hasn't been shared with my user and views are user specific. So unless I want to lose access to this view. Instead of assigning it, I'll simply share it. Sharing it allows me to still own and have access to the view, but it also gives other users access to the view. Here, I could click on add user or team, select the users I want to share this with, and then I can decide which permissions to give them when I share the view. For the purpose of this um, training and going forward, best practice is to give read and share permissions. This way, the users you share the view with can read, meaning they can see the view, and they can share it with other users or even unshare it from themselves. Giving them right permissions would allow them to edit the view. Delete permissions would allow them to delete this view from themselves and from you, and assign would allow them to reassign the view. Keep in mind that if you do give right permissions and they do edit the view, this edits the view not just for them, but for anyone that view is shared with, including you as the owner and creator. That's why I'm hesitant to give right permissions. 
if they want to use this view and then do a save as and create their own view, that would be a better option than changing the view for everyone it is shared with. So once you've given them read and share permissions, you can click share. And it will share the view with the users that you've selected. If you click back on advanced find, you're back here where you can make additional edits or view results. If I click results, and let's say that I wanted to export this to Excel to analyze or aggregate some of this data in a different way. To do so, I can click data and then export account. We're always gonna choose static worksheet, that first option, which is gonna allow you to just export a, an Excel worksheet with all of the records that were returned in the view, even if they don't all fit on one page. If I expand my advanced fund, yours may look like this. Yours may say export accounts here instead of having to click on data first, and then you could click static worksheet. This concludes the advanced science training in Dynamics 365. Please contact us to request a personal demo, get support, and access our resource library. Thank you.